Okay, so I'm just going to go back up to the top here. In this presentation, we're going to look at the Pima uh, diabetes data set. And essentially what we're doing here is using a series of binary classification uh, procedures to uh, predict uh, positive or negative outcomes uh, for uh, diabetes. Uh, the data set is the Pima data set, which is a fairly well-known medical statistics data set. So this is the second part. Uh, so the first uh, presentation, I actually just showed how to uh, create, uh, you know, it's essentially introduced it. So I'm going to uh, be a bit more advanced in this one. Okay. So in the last uh, presentation, I used the training data set. In this uh, presentation, I'm going to uh, incorporate the testing data set. And what I'm going to do is try out three different binary classifiers or classifiers. So I actually created them already. So I am from a scikit-learn linear model imported logistic regression from ensemble imported random forest classifier and from SVM I imported linear SVC. Okay, and I just created them there. So LR, SVC and RFC. Okay, and I've imported the data there. So anyway, I won't delay. I'll just keep going. I won't rehash the last video too much. Just to sort of uh, remark that I am going to, I didn't do this in the last video, so I'm just going to sort of do this again uh, now, is I'm just going to split up the test data set into the features and the target, okay? So just a quick remark, the first eight variables are the features, and the uh, second, uh, or the last variable, or diab1, is the target, or is the, essentially the features are the x variables, and target is the y variable. Okay, I'm just going to pause this a second, I have to sneeze. Pardon me. So I'm back on track now. So uh, in the last video, what I did here is LR.fit. This is uh, 93 here. So what I did there is just uh, uh, fitted the model with the training, da uh, training data set, the X, uh, the features, train underscore feature, feet, feet and train underscore targ, which is the target of the Y variable or the response variable. So the, the actual procedure of fitting a model actually is very, very simple as I could learn, okay? The big thing actually, and this is not something you actually can learn or watch, it's something that just requires a lot of study, is to actually uh, see all these uh, bits of information, essentially just learn all about them. This is where the hard work comes in, okay? Uh, like what the, what do all these things mean or if you change this does it make the outcome better or worse okay now this is like YouTube videos are the wrong way to learn it. it's just something that you have to just a slog you have to go through so now I fit my model LR.fit okay so it's fitted there now and let's just score it there to see how we get on with the training data set 76.8 percent that seems pretty good okay but the, the real acid test is when we apply it to the test data set. Now, usually the, it's, it's not as good when it uh, comes to unseen data. Okay, usually. You get lucky sometimes. And so in this particular instance, as it turns out, uh, it's close enough. That's a fairly, uh, you know, it's not exactly a good sign or a bad sign, but it's very sort of a sign of consistency, so to speak. Okay, and as you're getting 70, uh, 75 percent of cases, 75 to 76 percent of cases right consistently with this model. Okay, so at least the uh, the model is very consistent from the training data set to the test data set, which I think is something to be said for that. Okay, now this is a peculiar one for the logistic regression one because this is the thing that people would like to know. Uh, we have eight variables there. And this is actually just a sort of bit of a digression from uh, scikit-learn, is you might be interested in knowing about log odds, or what they call logits. Uh, essentially, actually, this log odds are the key thing here, the odds ratios, actually, I'll put that in as well. This is just a couple of things to Google. Uh, but essentially, they are uh, once you have the coefficients, you're able to uh, uh, find uh, the log odds ratios and so on, and the odds ratios and the uh, log odds and so on, which are very useful pieces of information. Uh, like they're they actually sort of uh, concern each particular variable. 
okay? So it's actually not just having a model, it's actually like, it's sort of working on the basis of a single variable, okay? And that's actually quite useful of information. Now it's a little bit of a digression here, but there we go, those are the, uh, the coefficients. So from that we can find out the log odds and the odds ratios, which is a useful bit of information in its own right. But I'm not going to sort of spend any more time in it there, just to sort of leave it there and invite you to make a note of that and chase that up. Okay, so uh, what we want to do here is, actually I'll just sort of cut to the chase actually, I'll go down to the confusion matrix down here, I'm sort of skip by a few things here. So I have from scikit uh, metrics, import the confusion matrix, okay. This is a cross tabulation of everything we got wrong and everything we got right and uh, uh, it's a sort of, let's have a look actually, let's just run the cell. So. Uh, for the training data set, we got uh, 345 negative cases correct. We had 127 positive cases correct. Uh, if I read this correctly, we had 96 false positives and 46 false negatives. Okay. So, um, you can just actually, I invite you to double check what, how, uh, the, the, how to interpret that. But that's the usual sort of uh, interpretation there. The, anyway, so, for the, uh, I, I just actually, just in case I might have got the false negatives and false positives mixed up with each other. But essentially, the, the main diagonal are correct values, okay? So, what I'm going to do now is, uh, although I don't think so, I think I'm right, okay. Uh, the, what I'm going to do now is try it out with the test data set as well. And we seem to get a fairly consistent result. We get 93 negative cases correct. We get 22 positive cases correct. But it's not such an amazing outcome, really, with regards to the false positives and false negatives. In fact, I think our precision rate is less than 50%, which is not great at all, really. You know. Uh, the So there's a very interesting metric there. Actually, if we were to compute the F metric, and the F score and the precision and recall, I think this model would not look as good uh, as this uh, as the picture. Uh, the picture of seventy six percent might be a bit overly flattering. Okay, that's partly due to the just the data we're working with, I suppose, as well. But you know, so accuracy, precision, and recall—very interesting things. But I'll sort of save them for another time. Okay. Anyway, so let's that's the logistic regression. Let's try out the random forest classifier. Okay, so we import the created this classifier as RFC. Let's have a look at that. Let's run it there again. Uh, there we go. Now, actually, I sort of said it before. I'm, uh, there's a lot of stuff I'm skipping past there, and I feel bad for leaving it. But just actually, I do invite you to actually look up stuff like this, like the Gini coefficient there and so on, and just actually an OOB, out of bag, uh, out of bag score, all this sort of stuff, and actually just try and get a, a more thorough understanding of what goes on with random classifiers, random forest classifiers. It's a lot to take in, but just, you know, just to, to sort of be, I don't, I mean, it's a very, it's almost too simplistic and too easy just to sort of accept it the way I'm sort of giving it to you now. So I'm just adding in this caveat. I'm trying to sort of make this video reasonably short, but I invite you to actually go off and learn about that sort of stuff. Okay. Anyway, let's see the scores. Now, it's seemingly we get a score of one on the training data set, which is fantastic, but almost a little bit too good to be true. Because, I mean, this is the thing about the training data set. It, they, when the model is being fitted, it can see all the data. So it's a sort of... It's given an unexpected boost. Well, not an unexpected boost, an unfair advantage with the training data set. So when it goes to the testing data set, it goes to 75%. Okay. The things have just sort of switched around a bit, a little bit. I don't know what happened there. Might have been a typo earlier on uh, that I sort of let by. So anyway, it seems to go from 100% uh, accuracy for the RFC with the training data set, but down to 75%, 75.32% for the test data set, okay? Which is not, that's sort of more or less on the level of the um, the logistic regression, okay? 
Just uh, just actually sort of more or less just uh, the same as logistic regression. Just the thing about this though is that it's uh, uh, the it's a bit of there's a little bit of randomness actually. So I'm just going to run that again. There we go. It is there's a sort of randomness. Oh, this is, okay. Anyway, just the, I think that there's a little bit of like uh, uh, fluidity in the model. Anyway, so. What I'm going to do, try and do there, actually, I think I've accidentally got uh, co uh, copied it out. This is, I'll just actually show you how to copy paste cells. Do you know what? I'll run it here again. Uh, no, I'll just copy this out, actually. Won't take us too long. So this is RFC. This is the confusion matrix. Okay. And that's our 100% accuracy. Okay. But this is, that's the confusion matrix for the training data set. Let's try it out for the test data set. It's okay, um, but you know, uh, we're still getting a lot of cases wrong, basically, uh, as accuracy, precision, and recall. You know, so essentially, I think the F measure there is going to be around the fifty percent mark. So anyway, the last one is the SVM, or it's a linear SVC actually. I'll just actually change that just to make it a little bit clearer. The linear SVC model, okay. It's a support vector machine uh, classifier, okay. And so let's fit the data with the training data set. There we go. Now, 64%. Mm. Not, not, not impressed. With the test data set, it seems to do a little bit better, actually. Okay. So, um, the thing about it is, though, actually, you can actually get the um, the coefficients, the log odds coefficients there again for this, which is something to be said for that. Okay. Anyway, the cross. Let's get the, the down to the. Um, let's go down to the cross tabulations. I'll just actually sort of speed this up a little bit, just so I can end the video soon. I'm just going to do the cross tabulations. So for the training data set. confusion matrix is as follows. Oh, it's brutal. You know, it's it's a uh, terrible case. Uh, this is like the, the SVM classifier does not work here at all. Okay. So it's just terrible. Awful. Okay. It's sort of very conservative picking lots of zeros. Okay. So the, the actual F measure of this is going to be absolutely horrifically bad. Okay. I think it's getting a recall here of the zero, which is awful. Okay. So that's just a sort of cautionary tale, SVC classifier. Now that actually just might be just to do with this data or the fact is I should have put in more specified a bit more uh, properly. Okay. So don't like to, don't write that off as uh, the SVC classifiers altogether. It's just that they were, didn't really work out that, that well in this case. Okay, so we'll leave it there.